I've had a lot of requests to test staplers and the review is finally here. So let's get the testing underway and see which brand is the best. And the first test, we'll see which stapler drives staples the fastest. Then we'll pound staples into a steel plate to see which staplers resist becoming jammed. Then we'll see which staplers can drive staples into corner bead, oak, and even composite deck material. All the staplers we'll be testing are designed for T50 staples. At a price of only $14, the least expensive stapler we'll be testing is made by Citadel. Most of the staplers we'll be testing are battery or electric, but I thought it'd be interesting to throw in a manual stapler. When it comes to T50, 50 staples, the Citadel is designed from quarter inch through 9 sixteenths. Push down on the staple retention bracket and then remove the staple retention assembly. Insert the staples and return the assembly and the bracket to the home position. And the Citadel is very light at 1.95 pounds. At 24 inches from the stapler, 96.4 decibels. Tool reaction speed can impact productivity, and the Citadel is only as fast as the operator's hand at 0.25 seconds. In our next test, we'll see how much force it takes to activate the stapler. And the Citadel takes almost 22 pounds. If you're stapling vapor barrier or insulation, tool speed can have a huge impact on productivity. So let's see how quickly the staplers can drive in 80 staples. And it took me 46 seconds to drive in 80 staples with the Citadel. No issues with the Citadel becoming jammed. At a price of $20 is this Aero brand. It claims to be the number one choice of pros since 1953. The T50 staple sizes are quarter inch through 9 sixteenths. Just like the Citadel, you have to push down on the staple retention bracket and then remove the staple retention assembly. Insert the staples and return the assembly in the bracket to the home position. The Aero weighs 1.85 pounds, 94 decibels for the Aero. And the Aero takes 12 pounds more pressure than the Citadel, 33 and a half pounds, 0.25 seconds for the Aero. Almost the same amount of time for the Aero at 45 seconds. No issues with the Aero becoming jammed. At a price of $30, is this Stanley 2-in-1 electric stapler? Works with T50 staples a quarter inch through 9 sixteenths. It also works with brad sizes 1 half through 5 eighths. The Stanley has an adjustment knob to adjust for hard and soft materials. Rotate the staple retention bracket towards the bottom of the stapler and then slide the assembly outward. Once the staples are in position, place the assembly in the home position. And the Stanley weighs 2.14 pounds. 98 decibels for the Stanley. All of the corded and battery staplers have have a spring-loaded contact striker which prevents the stapler from activating until it's pressed into the stapler. 2.69 pounds to activate the Stanley. And the corded Stanley is extremely fast at 0.05 seconds. And the corded Stanley is a lot faster than I am with the manual staplers at only 27.5 seconds. No issues with the Stanley becoming jammed. Also the price of $30, the same price as the Stanley, is this Be A Mile Cordless. It's a 4-volt stapler that can also drive brad nails. Works with T50 staples from quarter inch to 9 sixteenths. The manufacturer claims it can drive 850 staples per charge. And the Bielmeyer has a staple capacity around 50 compared to 80 for the other brands. Up to 50 pens per minute. We're going to test that. The Bielmeyer comes with a USB micro B charging cord, but it does not include the charger. And the Bielmeyer only weighs 1.61 pounds. 98.1 decibels for the Bielmeyer. And the Bielmeyer takes a little bit more pressure to activate the tool at 3.77 pounds. And the battery-powered Bielmeyer has to wind up before driving in the staple. 0.35 seconds. Since the Bielmeyer only holds 50 staples, I'll split the strip of staples in half. After firing off just 10 staples, the Bielmeyer jammed, and then the Bielmeyer jammed again after a few seconds. I did not include the time it took to clear the two jams and add the extra staples. And the Bielmeyer finally crossed the finish line in 81 seconds and took almost three times as long as the Stanley. At a price of $35, is this eWork electric stapler and nailer? One-handed operation with non-slip grip. Designed for quarter inch to 9 16 staples and a half inch to 5 8 nails. Only a 50 staple capacity. The eWork weighs 1.75 pounds, 98.8 decibels. And the eWork takes 3.3 pounds of pressure to activate the tool. And the corded eWork is just as fast as a Stanley at 0.05 seconds. Since the eWork only holds 50 staples, I split the strip of staples in half. Without including the few seconds it took to reload the stapler, the eWork took 48 seconds seconds, which is good enough to move into fourth place behind the Stanley. Unfortunately, the e-work became jammed on the final three staples. At a price of $40, is this new master? It claims the lightweight tacker can drive 30 shots per minute. Includes a power adjusted knob to increase or decrease the strength. 6.5 amps of current. And the new master weighs 2.6 pounds. 97.6 decibels. And the new master takes the least amount of force yet to activate at only 1.72 pounds. And the corded new master is just as fast as the e-work and the Stanley at 0.05 seconds. And the new master has a really long delay from the time the trigger is squeezed until the time the stapler reacts. And it took the new master 80 seconds to complete a full row of staples. No issues with jamming on the last several staples. Also the price of $40, the same price as the new master, is this Bauer which is sold at Harbor Freight. It's a 4 volt cordless stapler. It claims to have 40% more shots. 700 shots in just one charge. Comes with both the charger as well as a charging cable. So far all the other staplers can handle 916 staples but the Bauer is limited to half inch. The Bauer weighs 2.48 pounds, 97.1 decibels. And the Bauer takes the least amount of force yet at only 0.65 pounds. And the Bauer is the fastest battery powered stapler yet at only 0.2 seconds. And the Bauer is pretty quick to reconstitute 
prostitute after firing each staple before the next. 52 seconds is only 4 seconds slower than the E-Work. No jams with the bower on the last few staples. At a price of $46 is this Aero Model ET501C battery powered stapler. 5-in-1 cordless electric multi-tacker. It handles T50 staples, JT21, T25, 18 gauge brad nails, and 18 gauge pin nails. It claims to have a lot of versatility from hanging lights to carpentry projects. Fires over a thousand shots for a full charge. The arrow weighs 2.38 pounds, 89.3 decibels, and the arrow fired off a staple at 0.63 pounds over the weight of the tool. 0.2 seconds for the battery powered arrow. Just like the bower, the arrow needs a little bit of time to reconstitute after driving each staple before it can fire the next. 58 seconds or 6 seconds slower than the bower. No jams for the arrow. At a price of $50 is this WorkPro 3.6 volt lithium ion cordless 6-in-1 heavy duty staple gun. It works with T50, JT21, T25, T20, and Brad Nail 18. It claims it can fire 60 staples per minute or 1,100 per charge. 100 staple capacity. And a WorkPro weighs 2.36 pounds. 90.7 decibels. 0.15 pounds of force for the WorkPro. 0.25 seconds for the battery-powered WorkPro. And the WorkPro seems very similar to the 501C. 48 seconds is very close to the same speed as the Arrow. No issues with jamming for the WorkPro. At a price of $52 is this DeWalt electric stapler. Includes depth control. Uses heavy-duty, narrow-flat crown, cable staples, 18-gauge brad nails, as well as 18-gauge headless pins. High-low power switch allows for tool to drive faster into hard and soft materials. It claims to work in oak as well as pine. The DeWalt weighs 2.5 53 pounds, 99 decibels, and it took just over 2 pounds of pressure to activate the DeWalt. 0.05 seconds for the corded DeWalt. Just like all the other electric and battery tools, the DeWalt has to be lifted and the trigger has to be released before moving on to the next staple. 39 seconds is the second fastest time yet. No issues with the stapler becoming jammed. At a price of $60 is this Aero T50 DCD cordless stapler. It includes 3,750 pieces. Works with quarter inch through half inch T50 staples. It does claim that the hardest wood you can staple with this is pine wood. The Aero weighs 2.45 pounds, 97.4 decibels, and it took less than a pound of pressure to activate the stapler. 0.2 seconds for the battery powered Aero. And the Aero T50 is a little bit slower than the Aero 501C at 64 seconds. At a price of $84 for just the stapler and not the battery and charger is this Ryobi One Plus. The other cordless staplers are 3.6 to 4 volts, but the Ryobi One Plus is 18 volts. It claims it can deliver 5,500 staples per charge. It fastens T50 staples quarter inch to 9 sixteenths. Includes an adjustable power setting. Includes a convenient drive force indicator. Without a battery, the Ryobi weighs very close to 3 pounds. And it weighs 4.58 pounds with a 4 amp hour battery. 102.8 decibels. And the weight of the Ryobi is almost enough to fire off a staple. And the Ryobi is the fastest battery stapler at only 0.15 seconds. And the Ryobi is very fast and drove in a full row of staples in only 29 seconds or 1.5 seconds slower than the Stanley. No jams with the Ryobi. At a price of $119 for just the tool and not the battery and charger is this Milwaukee brand. It handles T50 staples sizes quarter inch to 9 sixteenths. Includes a power adjustment dial, sequential and contact actuation trigger. Includes a staple locating arrow. Dry fire lockout prevents blank stapling. Without a battery, the Milwaukee weighs 3.16 pounds. With a 4 amp hour battery, the Milwaukee weighs 4.06 pounds. 95.7 decibels. The Milwaukee fired off a staple with just the weight of the tool. 0.2 seconds for the Milwaukee. Keeping the trigger squeeze, the Milwaukee sends a staple with every tap of the striker, but it does take a little bit of time to reconstitute before firing the next staple. And the Milwaukee is very fast, but not quite as fast as the Stanley and the Ryobi at 37 seconds. And the Milwaukee locked out the staple with three staples left, and this happened over and over throughout the testing. And the most expensive stapler we'll be testing at $219 for just the tool and not the battery and charger is made by Makita. 18 volt LXT lithium ion powered stapler. It handles crown staples from 3 8 to 7 8 of an inch. While you can't adjust the power settings, you can't adjust the depth. Without a battery, the Makita weighs 3.87 pounds. With a 4 amp hour battery, the Makita weighs 5.23 pounds. 101.7 decibels. And the Makita fired off a staple at 0.02 pounds. And the Makita is the fastest battery stapler at 0.1 seconds. Just like the Milwaukee, with the trigger squeeze, the Makita fires off a staple with every tap of the striker. And the Makita reconstitutes a lot faster than the Milwaukee, 23.5 seconds to move into the lead. When it comes to tool speed, the Makita drove in approximately 80 staples in 23.5 seconds. The Stanley also did very well at 27.5, Ryobi 29, and Milwaukee 37. And the amount of force it takes to activate the stapler varies quite a bit with the Milwaukee coming out on top at 0.03 pounds. The Work Pro, Makita, Ryobi, Arrow, and the Bauer also performed very well. If tool weight is a factor in your purchasing decision, the Beal Meyer is the lightest stapler at only 1.61 pounds.
Up until a certain point, more downward force on top of the stapler will actually cause the staple to be driven in deeper. So let's see how much force it takes for each brand to drive in a 916 staple into a spruce 2x4. And with 32 pounds of downward force applied to the front of the stapler, the Citadel wasn't able to drive the staple into the pretty soft 2x4. At just over 40 pounds, the Citadel caused damage to the staple without driving the staple all the way into the board. At 35 pounds, the arrow didn't quite drive the staple in, but 40 was just enough. And the Stanley needed three attempts at 10, 15, and finally 20 pounds. At 20 pounds, the Stanley drove the staple all the way into the board and takes the lead from the arrow. And the Beelmeyer took several swings at 10, 15, 20, and 25 pounds and finally got the job done. And the E-Work took a swing at 15, 20, 25, and even 30 pounds and still couldn't drive the staple all the way in. Unfortunately, the staple is crushed. And the new master took two swings at 15 and finally 20 pounds to drive in the staple. Most of the other brands handle 916 staples, but the bar is limited to just a half inch staple. And the bar took two swings and the bar was able to drive in the staple at 20 pounds. And the arrow took quite a few swings at 15, 20, 25, 30, 35, and even 40 pounds and things did not go well. Unfortunately, the arrow's hammer just doesn't hit hard enough to benefit from the extra force. And the work pro struggled to work like a pro at 15, 20, 25, and 30 pounds. Just like the arrow, the work pro just doesn't hit hard enough to handle a 916 staple. And the DeWalt made quite a few attempts at 5, 10, 15, 20, and even 25 pounds. Unfortunately, the DeWalt is just crumpling staples instead of driving them into the board. And just like the Bauer, the Aero T50 uses a half inch staple. And the Aero tried hammering in the staple at 10, 15, 20, 25, and even 30 pounds without success. Unfortunately, the Aero just does not hit hard enough. And the Roby throws a very hard punch. And the Roby took three swings at five, seven and a half, and finally 10 pounds. At 10 pounds, the Roby takes the lead from the Stanley. And the Milwaukee also throws a very nice punch. And the Milwaukee took four swings, finally driving in the staple at 12 pounds, or two pounds more force than the Roby to move into second place. And the Makita is not messing around. And it took a quick one-two punch at five and then seven pounds to bury the staple. Very impressive. If you're looking for a tool that requires the minimal user input, the Makita only takes seven pounds of force to drive a 916 staple into a two x four. The Roby came in second at 10 pounds, Milwaukee 12, and Stanley and Newmaster, 20 pounds. The Bauer isn't designed to handle 916 staples, but it did drive in a half inch staple at 20 pounds. Let's see how the staplers perform driving in chisel point staples into drywall corner bead and drywall with 30 pounds of force. <laughs> And the Citadel just mangled the staple. And the arrow partially drove in one leg of the staple. And the Stanley left a pretty good dent in the corner bead and destroyed the staple. Just like the Citadel, the Beelmeyer destroyed the staple. And the corner bead is too much for the E-Work. And the new master destroyed the staple. And the Bauer did the best yet driving in one leg of the staple. And the Aero 501C destroyed the staple. And the Work Pro partially drove in both legs of the staple into the corner bead. Unfortunately, the DeWalt experienced a jam. And the Aero T50 destroyed the staple. And the Roby has a very well-designed hammer and made very easy work of the corner bead without destroying the staple. And the Milwaukee drove in one leg of the staple on the first attempt. And the Milwaukee did a great job on the second attempt as well as the third. And the Makita made very easy work of the corner bead on back-to-back -back attempts. So the only three staplers with enough firepower to penetrate the corner bead and drywall include the Ryobi, Milwaukee, and the Makita. Before we test the staplers for resistance to becoming jammed, let's see how they perform on oak with 40 pounds of force using half-inch staples. Unfortunately, the Citadel crumpled the staple. And the Arrow did a much better job in almost completely drove in the staple. And the Stanley did the best job yet completely driving in the staple. And the Beelmeyer hammer hits way too soft for oak. And the E-Work has just enough punch to drive in the staple. And the new master drove the staple deeper into the wood compared to the E-Work. And the Bauer sunk the staple most of the way just like the E-Work. And the Arrow 501 just doesn't have enough firepower for the oak. Just like the Arrow, the oak is way too much for the Work Pro. Once again, the DeWalt is just smashing staples instead of driving them. Just like the Arrow 501, the Arrow T50 just doesn't have enough firepower. And the Roby has more than enough firepower for the oak completely driving in the staple. And the Milwaukee made very easy work of driving the staple into the oak. And the Makita completely buried the entire staple into the oak. Very impressive. While assessing performance is subjective, only five brands receive the highest possible score of one for completely driving in the staple. Before we get to the final test on composite decking, let's first test the jam resistance of the staplers. As the staples accelerate through the cardboard, they're going to come to a sudden stop when they hit a block of steel. No issues with the Citadel becoming jammed. However, if you ever have something become stuck inside the stapler, you'll have to disassemble it. No problems with the Aero stapler becoming jammed. Just like the Citadel, there's a screw that has to be removed to clear a bad jam or staples that become stuck. Unfortunately, the Stanley did become jammed, but removing the damaged staples was very easy. And the Beelmeyer pounded the staples flat without becoming jammed. And he worked flat in the staples without becoming jammed. Just like the Stanley, the new master became jammed, but removing the damaged staples was very easy. Just like the E-Work, the Bauer flattened the staples and avoided becoming jammed. And the Arrow became jammed, but the jam was very easy to clear. Just like the Arrow, the Work Pro's jam was very easy to clear. 
and the DeWalt experienced a pretty bad jam and I had to use some pliers to remove the staple. And the Aero T50 became jammed pretty badly and I had to use pliers to clear the jam. And the Roby had no problem smashing staples without becoming jammed. Just like the Roby, the Milwaukee pounded staples flat without becoming jammed. And the Makita crushed several staples without becoming jammed. Most of the staplers received the highest possible rating of one for avoiding becoming jammed. Most of the other staplers that did experience a jam were pretty quick and easy to clear the jam and then return to service. In the final test, let's see if any of the staplers can drive in a 916 staple into composite decking with 50 pounds of force on top of the stapler. And the composite was way too hard for the Citadel and it only drove the staple in about halfway. And the Arrow made a little bit more progress than the Citadel but far short from finishing the job. And the Stanley made about twice as much progress as the Arrow but it didn't quite finish the job. Unfortunately, the Beelmeyer made the least amount of progress yet. Definitely a light duty stapler. And the E-Work moves into second place behind the Stanley. And the new master made a little bit more progress than the E-Work. And the Bower uses the shorter half inch staple and drove the staple in about halfway. And the soft hitting arrow made the least amount of progress yet and moves into last place behind the Citadel. Unfortunately, the Work Pro just doesn't hit too hard and it struggled just like the arrow. And the DeWalt made about the same amount of progress as the new master, but it did a lot of damage to the staple. And the Aero T50 really struggled in this test, and it performed about the same as the Aero 501 in the Work Pro. And the Roby completely drove in the staple. Very impressive! And the Milwaukee hits pretty hard, but not hard enough to completely drive in the staple, but it did perform good enough to move into second place. And the Makita drove in the staple even deeper than the Roby. Very impressive! Assessing performance is somewhat subjective, but the only two brands that completely drove in the staple include the Makita and the Roby. Milwaukee finished in third in the very very affordable Stanley, fourth place. In some applications, stapling close to an object might be necessary. And the manual arrow stapler is able to place the staple just 1.75 millimeters away from a vertical object. The Citadel Stanley and the E-Work are able to get in very close at under six millimeters. I also compare tool width from one inch above the bottom of the stapler. And the manual arrow and the Makita offer the narrowest profile at very close to one inch. The Stanley Citadel and the Maki also offer a very narrow profile. Very impressive performance by the Roby. It definitely seems like the best value. If you want the best stapler though, in my opinion, the Makita definitely seems to be the best. If you don't mind having a corded tool, the Stanley performed very well, especially when you consider the budget price of only $30. Regarding the Milwaukee, it definitely seems like a great stapler, but it seems to be falling behind some of the competition. All the videos in this channel, including this one, are viewer suggested. So if you have a video idea, I hope you'll take time to leave a comment. Thanks so much for watching. Please take care and I look forward to next time.